Okay, so welcome to the Intern Whisperer. Our show is all about the future of work and innovation. And my name is Isabella, and today's guest is Diana Teal. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to introduce her to everybody. And she is the director of the Central Florida Tech Bridge, Team Orlando, and Central Florida Tech Grove. She's like a really a very busy, busy woman. We want to say, go Team Orlando. Also, a little special thing out there. I remember you telling me that at ITSEC. Um, Diana is an experienced program manager that honed her skills from working with the U.S. Department of Defense, Operations Management, Configuration Management, Government, and Navy. Wow, she's such a busy woman, and she is a woman in tech, and you earn that. Um, she has significant leadership and management experience and a woman in tech that gives back to the community. And you will find Diana at events that are focused on innovation, armed forces, and serving. So our show is all about the uh, learning technology and the future of industries and jobs. And I always kick off my show with tell our guests five words that describe you and why those five words. And we did review them in advance and I can prompt you. So the first one you said was tenacious. Why tenacious? Both of my parents are were Marines, and tenacity was a quality that they admired. Um, so I learned young not to give up. When I was told no, it was no now. But if I asked the question differently, maybe there was a yes. And so I learned early success with that. And uh, that's just something that's always served me well, so mm -hmm. tenacity. You know what? I really like that explanation because I'm a spiritual girl. I'm a Jesus girl, but I have a potty mouth. And everything that you just said, that your parents were Marines and you learned young not to give up, but it could be a yes later. I think that's also like how God thinks towards me because he goes, oh my God, what did you do now? But like, you know, he's so patient and he, he'll tell me no. He says, not right now. That's just... I just wanted you to know that there was a hidden spiritual meaning in what you just said to me, and I think I needed to hear that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, your next word was passionate. I believe um, passionate because I just like to care. When I'm passionate about something, I have all of the feelings, and it makes me better at what I'm doing. I I I can be all in. I guess I'm I'm one of the people that I'm all in or I'm not. And I just, I know I, I perform better when I'm all in, so passion. Mm, I like that one too. Curious. There's just so much going on in the world. I like the, watching children and how they're curious about everything. And sometimes I've left that part of me behind and I'm not, I don't feel fulfilled. I feel more fulfilled when I'm asking the questions, when I'm finding out why people are doing what they are doing. Why does this work like it does? Why did you choose this path? Whatever it is, instead of making an assumption and going on my assumption, really taking the time to find out why. Mm, that's very good too. Um, connector, why a connector? I guess that goes back to passion and tenacity um, and curious. When you're curious, you find out things about people. And then when I find out and I look at the big picture and I'm, and it's, oh, you're doing this when this person's doing this. Wouldn't it be great if you guys got together mm -hmm. and then this could happen? And I don't need to be a part of it. I just love seeing that's that's part of that passion for me is helping to to connect people, to make to to get their passion flowing. Right. I think like sometimes there's like a little missing chink with things that people are doing and they just need that little whatever the connection. Yeah. So if I can help with that, that's why I can I can see. I say all the dots. I can see where they are. And sometimes I can see where they need to, if they connect, we can make magic mm. or, or the people cannot make. Yeah. Well, it helps to have somebody that's a, a magician making that happen too. the connections. You got to have somebody doing that for sure. And then your last word was holistic. I'm very intrigued by this word. Holistic, because I think it takes a whole person, not just a part of a person to make all of the magic. I, uh, Personally, I a uh, breast cancer survivor. Really? Wow. And, and I went through it um all of me, right? It wasn't just the medical, it wasn't just the medicine. It was all of me. I looked at nutrition. I looked at at my what I was doing to work out, how I was treating my body. 
um, like the love that was surrounding me, appreciating every morning for what it was, having faith, all of that. I work in a correct incredible command that supported me throughout that. And, and some of the people that I work with were actually people that went with me to chemo treatments and to all of my doctor's appointments, and I couldn't have done it without them. And so to me, it's a whole community. It's the whole person. Mm -hmm. It's holistic. Hmm. That's beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. Well, let's talk about how you, where you went to school and how you got to where you are now, because I feel like, you know, how I met you was through Central Florida Tech Grove at Game Jams. I've met you, you know, seen you before also at ITSEC, but we can talk about that. You're just super, super engaged in our technical communities for sure, but I also have seen you in other places. So I know you like innovation quite a bit. So where did you go to school and how did you get to where you are now? Okay, so I went to school, North Carolina Wesleyan College, a small college in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I went there while I worked full time. And so very non-traditional. So I have my degree in business administration, so nothing really technical. And with a minor in psychology, and my thought was no matter what I did in life, because I really didn't know what I was going to do in life, what I did, both of those degrees would help me. They would serve me in any, any path that I took. And I think it has. So I grew up in eastern North Carolina, and my both of my parents were Marines. My dad died when I was young. I wanted to stay close to my mom, and one of the only places I could work there and have a career was at the uh, the the depot, the depot, the rework facility for aircraft on the Marine Corps Air Station. So that's how I got into my career of being in technical. It really wasn't a desire to do it. I wanted to be close to mama, and <laughs> and that was the path that got me close to my mom with a career and loads of opportunities working for the Department of Navy. Mm. You know, that's so funny. There was, what was this movie a long time ago? Mm, I'll think of it in a minute, but uh, officer and a gentleman. So I'm kind of picturing your, your life is like that. And I'm thinking when you said like, there was just nothing but the Navy base and I'm going, oh yeah, she's probably been swept off and going to the, to the ball and all of those things that were happening. Except for my mother taught me that I could only rely on myself. So you had a good mom. I wasn't being, there's plenty of Marines, but not to get swept off, but to be able to stand on my own two feet. So that's why I started working for the Department of the Navy, the Marine Corps there. And that was the beginning of my career in technical and working with the military. Mm, very nice. And and it's interesting too, you went into something that was, you didn't en enlist, you didn't join. So you're like a civilian, but they hire civilians. They do. Yeah. We hire a lot of civilians. I am not, I never enlisted. I've always served my way as a civilian. So starting out in Marine Corps Air Station and then worked at um, Pax River, Maryland, where we have our, our headquarters command, Nav Air, and that now down here in Orlando. So it's a, it's a been a wonderful career because there's lots of opportunities within the military. You can do a lot of different things. I started out as a logistician. So working on getting the, like when you go into a car, you get your car maintained, right? Mm -hmm. Everything you need to maintain a car, right? You need publications, you need spare parts. You need somebody that knows how to replace the parts. You need all of the training, all of the different elements. So I did that for aircraft when I started out my career. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Nothing I never thought about doing when I was getting my bachelor's degree. And then when I came down here, we do training systems. We do modeling simulation training and human performance. Mm -hmm. So different. And then I got into program management. So lots of different opportunities. Mm. I think that's what Cassie did too, right? She did not, you know, Cassie. Cassie, I do. Yeah. And she is a civilian in a military job. Yes. She used to work for the Air Force and then she came to work for us. And now she's working for the National the NSIN, what is that national? I don't know. Security Innovation Network. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I have her on my list of people I want to have on my show. So she's going to be, I'm gunning for her. Not okay. really, <laughs> but I want her to be on here. So modeling simulation, do you have any preferences as to over, when you look over your years of working in this industry, things that you went, I really, really, really like that. I really, really liked when I started out because working on a Marine Corps air station, I could see the end user. I could see the impact that I had on the Marines, even though it was parts and training manuals and things like that. I still, I, I could have that interaction. That was really rewarding. 
Then when I've been here in Orlando, I've been given a lot of opportunities with our command to create environments and cultures like the Tech Grove. So that's been incredibly rewarding to be able to work with our industry members and to see and help build those relationships between the government and industry has been very rewarding. So let's talk about all of these roles that you wear hats for. Let's start with the first one that I had read out, and it was the um, Tech Bridge, Central Florida Tech Bridge. What does that organization do? Okay, so the Tech Bridge is under a thing called Naval X. Naval X is out of the Office of Naval Research. ONR. And there's tech bridges. There's about 18 all around the world. And wow. they're mostly affiliated with warfare centers, which is what we are. That means we have acquisition authority and also we have a federal lab. So the tech bridge is about the connector for innovation. The The DOD has been great at innovation. We created things like the GPS. So you have Navy to thank for that. And then memory foam, you have NASA to thank for that, right? Wow. And then we commercialized it. So military has been wonderful with innovation. We just aren't doing it fast enough and enough right now. And we know when we look at where innovation is happening, it's happening with our startups. It's happening with our on entrepreneurs. And we need to bring them in. And so that's why we stood up these tech bridges all around the world so that we will have this storefront, if you will, for innovators like the Tech Grove, for them to come to and be able to connect with the government. The reason here in Central Florida we have a Tech Grove that you hear so much about instead of the Tech Bridge is because the Tech Bridge is a member of the Tech Grove. Most Tech Bridges, all of the Tech Bridges are D Department of the Navy. But because we have all four services co-located, all right here in Research Park, all in the modeling, simulation, training, human performance business space, we wanted to create something that was for all of us, holistic, right, for all mm -hmm. of the services. So we changed the name to the Grove because it, it recognizes we're in Central Florida and part of, you know, Orange County. And so we could take it off of that. And we also wanted to make sure that it was welcoming. We didn't want it to sound military. We didn't want it to sound DOD. We, I say there's no gates, guards, or guns when you come to the Tech Grove. Everybody is welcome. When you come on base, there's all of those things. There's gates, guards, and guns. You might be welcome, but you're going to have to go through some security protocols. So the Tech Grove is that 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 storefront for all of the services that are co-located with us in Research Park. Mm. That is interesting. I did not know the history of it. I remember when the Tech Grove launched and I went, what is this? You know, and I I know that I've been there. We have done game jams out there with OMG Labs and Indynomicon. And it has it's an amazing space. I went, can I work out of here? And was told, no, you cannot. It is only for events and for the military that come in and they do their events because it was like brand new right, right then at the right. beginning. Because I went, I want it to be a place I can work out of, just walk in kind of like I do with Starter Studio or any other co-working space, but it's not really structured to be a co-working space. It's not a co-working space. It's more about the, the connections. Yeah. Um, and we do have people, and it's more about the events, it's about the collisions, it's about the opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that it's um, very collaborative for sure. And one of the things that I was just there for last last month was something that, um, it was the SBA Roadshow. Right. That was That was a super event. I loved it. I wish we would do that every year because it was so nice to be able to meet people in the those different agencies and be able to have access to them and say, okay, how do I do business with you? We were so honored to have them. So that was the SBA that came yeah. down and they're doing that roadshow. So they're traveling all around the country. We were their first stop for the roadshow. Mm -hmm. And we had, like you're saying, all of these three letter agencies that were there at the Tech Grove. I don't even know that I knew that there was 30 some agencies that had no. Cibber opportunities. No. So that was amazing. And and we had so many people that came in from all around the state. Out of I'm going to tell you, even out of this, yes, out of the state, but a distance. I was so surprised at how far people had come to be there and meet with them for 10 minute windows. Right. <laughs> right. Because what I and when I was talking to industry, what they said is, and I got it, right? There's one of us government people and there's a lot of industry members. So it's hard for them to get in touch with that government person. Mm -hmm. So this was their opportunity and they took advantage of it. Yeah, we loved having that. It was an honor. Oh my gosh, it was great. So 
now let's go over to the, let me find it. I have to go back up here into my intro of where I was discussing what you do. All of these hats again. It is Team Orlando. What is Team Orlando? So Team Orlando, I, I talked about, we've got all four services co-located right here in UCF Research Park. So Team Orlando is basically, I, I say the essence of it is the big four. So it's PEO Stride which is Army, PM Traces, Marine Corps, not TSD, Navy, and then Athams Air Force. So it's basically those four organizations. And then there's many other organizations that augment and support it. And there's other organizations within there. So that, like there's Army Contracting Command that's also here. And there's Army STI, CFT. So there's other organizations. Those are the four primary ones that make the decision. So we've got the longest running memorandum of, of agreement, MOA, between the not Navy and the Army here in Research Park. It was signed in 1950. Wow. And it's still active today. So we've been co partnering, collaborating, working together for a long time. And we continue to do that through Team Orlando. So Team Orlando, we bring together the organizations, the military, the government organizations. There's no J in our name. There's no joint. We're not mandated to work together. So when we do things together, it's because we want to. It's collaboratively. So we'll do things like STEM. Together, we have a big STEM outreach with the Starbase and different things going on there in Team Orlando. So we do that together. We'll do just different events. And when we go to ITSIC, we do that together. Mm -hmm. So the different things, it's bringing us together in a meaningful way, looking for talent. So we're all looking for talent. How do we do that? together instead of army going after talent, Navy going after talent, like let's bring it together and resource. So let's talk about it sick since you opened the door for that. I know I have to always go look this up and I'm going to look it up because I want to make sure that I have the correct words for each acronym. And oh, I've got it. Okay, go. I say that now. Yeah. Industry. What is the first one? Oh my gosh. Okay. So just a minute. Yeah. It says inter-service. Industry training, simulation, education. Conference. That is right. Yes. Yeah. Inter-service, inter industry, training, simulation, and education conference. Yes. Very interesting. I love going to that event. I love seeing the cool things that the government is doing. Well, the military is doing. And then things that I see in defense, things that I see in education, things that I see in the healthcare industry. It is so interesting. I, I was a child. I felt like a child going in there the first time I saw it. I went, this is adult Halloween. We can run around and get the coolest toys, like, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's overwhelming. Yes, it was. Yes. So nice. So nice. But um, I really encourage people to go to that event, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So NTSA, the National Training Simulation Association, is the one that sponsors that. They're the host for ITSIC every year. And then with all of the, the services co-located here in Orlando with Team Orlando, it, it rotates who's the lead service. So this year, I think, is Navy lead. So we get to pick the theme and we'll have a little bit. We'll have the keynote speaker and things like that going on. And it's an incredible opportunity. I always, I was at ITSIC principal for 10 years for the Navy. So mm -hmm. had that role too. And I would always love it when I could take um, flag officers, which are admirals onto the showroom floor for the first time, because they would all be, I've been to a conference before. I've got this. And I'm like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I gotcha. And so we would come down the escalator, you know, yep. we'd come down the escalator and I'd love to get in front of them and watch their eyes when they would walk onto the showroom floor because their eyes would light up like it's Christmas. Yeah. And I would say to people, I can tell you about Disney, but until you experience it, you don't really know no. what it's like. And it's, it's the same way, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it, it is hmm, frontier technology. It is all of that. And it's really, really cool to see. And I don't think people realize it's something that is every year in Orlando, right. Florida. And we want to make sure that people know that when they come here, I mean, the week before it, I think, or the week after it's the week before is IAPA, which is the entertainment industry. Right. But then when you get to go to ITSEC and you see the simulation, how it's being used in a totally different way, totally. AR, VR, it's not just entertainment. It really is about learning and training and, and defending our country and so many things. It's amazing. It yeah. It's amazing. So it's the week after Thanksgiving every year. Mm -hmm. And it started as a Navy event a mm. long time ago. And then it grew. And then um, it, the, all of the services became a part of it. And then NTSA took it on. And now it's this huge, it's like, what, 20,000 people will come to it's like I think. It's a lot. It fills up the whole concourse is right. all I know over there on I-Drive. I feel like it's like, I don't know. 
the whole south wing or whatever it is, west wing. And it's it is not just demonstrations on the floor. So they have the paper presentations where people right. work all the year careers. Long. The career fair, where you can, yeah, the tutorials. They have workshops. They have all of the special panels and presentations. Mm -hmm. So it's multifaceted of it. And then they have the the whole thing in the back where it's the education, and you yes. can go and see like what are the latest games people are creating and robots. There's so many things that you can go and do. You can see nonprofits as well as for profit. It's a lot of fun. And there's like this one aisle that's for the startups mm -hmm. specifically. So I like that too, because that's going to be a different kind of tech than what mm -hmm. you're going to see with the larges. Very indie, yes. very indie type of tech too. You know, independent little small companies yeah. that are vying to grow and become the next, you know, pick a name, you know, that's out there no matter what it is. Well, that is super interesting. We're going to switch the questions now. We're going to come over here. Who is your favorite thought leaders and why? And so you had a historical perspective and then a futuristic one. So let's talk about your your past one. Okay, Marcus Aurelius. I just recently, somebody talked to me about his books. Mm -hmm. So I just recently read his book on meditations, I think is the name of it, meditations. And I, um, and it's all about your brain and how your perspective and how you look on life and, and about you can, you can look at things as though they're beautiful or not. You mm -hmm. have that choice to make and to make yourself a better person, maybe, and to be happier, just why not take the high road? Why not take it as things are good? Why not ask the questions and find out why? Mm, yeah, so good. So I copied some of the quotes, you know, before we started the show, it said, dwell on the beauty of life. They they had more, a little more to it, but I just like this one, dwell on the me beauty of life. And I know it's going to tie into the things that you had shared about yourself. Um, so we'll, we'll save that one. But, you know, you have power over your mind, not outside events. We always can make choices. Um, everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. And waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Yeah, I love all of this. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. I think that's the most insightful one. Right? Yeah, so and we good. we have the choice of what we think. Yeah. I don't think people realize that they really have a choice about that. We we just think, oh, well, this is the way it is. Right, no, no. right. You can choose to believe or not to believe. Right. Yeah. So I have this uh, other person that you had mentioned. You go ahead. Elon Musk. Okay. Why Elon? He's intriguing to is me. Is he? He is. And I know that like he can be very polarizing to people. Um, I, I'm listening to his book now on tape and I'm fascinated by him. I'm fascinated. It talks about how his childhood and how it was very rough childhood. I can't even imagine I know I've gone through some things and thought that that was bad. And then I listened to his story and, oh my gosh, what he overcame and just the way his brain works. I mean, they acknowledge throughout, he is a different thinker. He doesn't have a lot of empathy. He thinks the way he does, mm -hmm. which he's, he's so driven. He's so driven to get to space in a meaningful way and how he's, he's able to quickly make decisions and he's willing to go for broke on his ideas. Yeah. He's that passionate and tenacious and committed. Yes. He makes my tenacity. And, um, you know, like if I was comparing like different levels, he's a mm -hmm. whole different level. Yes. Yeah. And one of my other guests, uh, Krista, uh, Santos, I remember her last name too. Uh, Krista Santos, she liked him also, and she did a little bit of research. And one of the things that she, um, shared, and I don't want to ruin the book that you're listening to, but um, she said that he has created something called um, Neuralink, and it is a brain chip startup that performed the first implant in a human last month. It was like a year ago, though. His brain chip implant um, ha patient has made a full recovery and can move a mouse around the screen just by thinking. So he was a quadriplegic. And he, but the ability to think about something allows him to move wow. things without any, any issue. Well, I haven't gotten there yet in the book, yeah. but. <laughs> and I, I, I bet it. he's actually creating the same type of technology that allows uh, those that are paraplegic to be able to walk. Cause I've seen mm -hmm. some of the suits that they put on, they can actually walk kind of like a Terminator thing, right? Not evil. Yeah. No, it's, he's just amazing, right? That, that what he's willing He's willing to take risk 
Mm -hmm. that I think most of us would not be willing to take. And in the book, it talks about like, it just does affect him and he'll get physically sick. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's stressed out so much, but he just continues because he's so dedicated to his mission. Yeah. Um, I know he's had, well, I don't know if he's uh, got any mental health as it relates to like, you know, issues that could be like bipolar or something. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't researched that, but I know that living that kind of a life is very being super high creative and extremely intelligent is very hard to be understood. Right. And it's not easy to find a, a person that will say, okay, I'm going to stay with you. <laughs> right. Cause it can be, you know, the job is going to be first, not a, not whatever. And he is driven. He is driven. And I think he's really blessed to have a brother that is just by seems to be from what I can take from the book, right? He's by his side and knows him better than anybody and is willing. Elon just calls him and says, Hey, I need you to put all your money on this. And his brother's willing to do it because he made all of his money with his bro, you know, with Elon also. Interesting. And then his mom had the same thing, right? So he's got family that stays with him, has stayed with him through thick and thin. Yeah, that's important to have that. Yes. So who is your favorite superhero and why? I want to go with Wonder Woman. Okay, why? Well, because it's a woman. <laughs> um, one, because she's female. And the other one is, I think the original actress's name was Diana. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's when she's not Wonder Woman. Okay. That's but, her, her oh, really. That, that's her yeah. actor. Her stage name was Diana. Wait, no. Wonder. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, you're talking about the movie Wonder Woman. And I'm going to look this one up. And actress, I think that what you, her name was um, Diana, um, but it was Lin, Linda yeah, Carter Linda for the Carter original. Visit. But it was, oh my gosh, her name isn't on here. Maybe I'm just making that part. No, up. you are right. But I think the character's name is Diana. Oh, so that's why. Okay. So I think the character is Diana. So how, how could I not? Yeah. So, um, and Diana, I'm going to go and do a little search on this. So yes, it says Wonder Woman is a superheroine. So it doesn't say the name in here, but it's Diana Prince. There you go. Yeah, that's the character's name. And then she turns into Wonder Wonder Woman. Right. So yeah. how could I not? <clears throat> yeah, you have to love it. That's your name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally good. So there was this study, and it was done in 2023. And researchers at Martin Luther University um, in Ohio, the Ohio State, want to make sure I'm citing these all correctly, um, recently published a meta-analysis, which looked at data from close to 130 experiments that explored over... A, 10,000 participants about the power of taking a superhero pose so that certain type of posture can influence a person's competence, behavior, and hormone levels. And so I know I'm going to stand up and do this. I'm going to invite you to do it if you're comfortable. We're going to stand up. Ooh, I'm going to have to move this one up. We're going to stand up, take our feet slightly apart. I know that I'm not on camera, but that's okay. You are totally on camera. Um, and put your hands on your hips and then you just kind of put your chest out and gaze up like a superhero. And I, every time I do this, like down at OMG, you know, um, they always, uh, the, a couple of the project managers that are down there, uh, they come up to me and they do that. And I go, okay. And I go, so we're doing this. We're going to be a superhero. I love it. And I do always feel very empowered, honestly, definitely feel confident because I don't care what somebody's looking at me and thinking. No, I love it. I love yeah. it. I believe that when I have to present because I do outreach for our command. So I present a lot. So I don't know that I consciously go into wonder woman, you know, mm -hmm. that, that defined, but I know I really, you know, I'll, I'll start to breathe, do the breathing and stand a little bit more. Yes. Mm. Erect and very cool. Very, very cool. Okay. So Last question for the first half of the show is what would you want to be remembered for and why helping others? Okay. I know that's what you're born to do, but yeah, I'm um, going to guess. Right. I guess I, I don't, why I think it just as young as I can remember, I always just want like that. I, it, when I help others, I feel good about, but maybe that's it. I feel good about yeah, myself. the endorphins, right? Yeah. Yeah. They always release. Was your mom like that? No. Okay. No. So see, it's you. It's how you're wired. Yeah. My mom was from New England, very stoic. Mm. How about your dad? Yes. He was very caring. Okay. So see, you got it from your dad's yeah. side of the family. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So we're going to take a moment to acknowledge our sponsor, Cat5 Studios, and we will be right back. The Intern Whisperer is brought to you by Cat5 Studios, who help you create games and videos for your training and marketing needs that are out of this world. Visit Cat5 Studios for more information to learn how Cat5 Studios can help your business. Thank you, Cat5 Studios. Now we're back to the second part of our show, where we talk about the future of jobs and industries in 2030. What do you think 2030 is going to look like? I think, and I just think, right? It's an opinion, as Marcus Aurelius says, right? It's just it's all an opinion. opinion. Um, nothing's fact. I think we're going to go, we could go backwards in time a bit with all of where the world is. It just seems like we're heading at this frenzied pace towards something. And um, and maybe it's just my simplistic mind. I I, I, I think that there's going to be some sort of a, I want to say collision. I don't know that that's the right word, but there's just so much discord. Is that the right word? Mm, yeah. Now, quite frankly, I agree with you because I think that there's going to be we know that we use rare minerals in our phones and in our all, our all of our devices. We know that climate change is changing things around. Something is happening in the world. Normally, this is March. We're in March. And normally, all of the Christmas, well, all of the cold spells that I remember is we would be cold um, November, December, January, February, and then we would start to get warm in March, and then there would be one more cold spell. We didn't have it. It was like 56. That's as cold as it got this year. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, climate change is real. The grid is going to go down. People don't know how to do anything for themselves. We're in trouble. Right. Well, so I agree with you. We And we've been seeing signs of, you know, things happening with the grid. The, you, you know, Facebook, everything went down the other yeah. day. And yeah. then you, you, there's just hacking happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing signs of things. And so I... I don't know. I'm just kind of, you know, guessing that that could be a thing where we go backwards a bit mm -hmm. and we don't know. I mean, well, we could look at COVID, right? Yeah. Let's use COVID. That happens. And overnight, everything is shutting down. You can't get groceries. You can't do this. You can't, we're told everything we can't do stay in your house. So that was as close to everything going down that we could imagine because we were cut off from each other. But we still had internet. We could still talk to our loved ones. We could call them up on the phone, right? We could still, I could still do my job from mm -hmm. away. I could do things virtually via Zoom and stuff like that. That became a thing. If, if the grid really goes down. Yeah, that impacts your ability to get money at the bank. Yes. The ability for supply chain to bring food to us. Our ability to communicate with other people because the only thing that would possibly be around would maybe be postal service. But if there's no ability to buy gas right. or move things, we're we're sunk. Right. Yeah. And then some people think like, oh no, that could never happen because this again. <laughs> too much reliance on too many things. I I really, I don't know. I, I just we we've gotten to this manic space with technology yeah. and innovation. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I feel like um, not everything is about technology. People are forgetting how to be human right. and how to be relational. Right. And if we do not remember, you know, that we are made for relationship, that's what we're here for. We're here to support one another. Just like what you were saying, you're, you know, you're made to help other people. You have purpose. We, we're not made to um, have a four hour work week because what are we going to do in that amount of time? Not everybody can be a technologist. Not everybody is meant for STEM. So what do we do with those people? There's just like, we really need to think about finding the balance in all of this. And if the grid goes down, then maybe we'll, maybe we'll be better people in a different way. Bring right. human, human back into a lot of the equations that are needed. So generative AI, what do you think that will have as an impact positively or negatively on the future of work, because a lot of people were very angry when there was a writer strike, you know, for any of our TV shows and movies that we watch. We've seen it impact with um, in education where overnight it's like, oh, how do I know this is a student really, you know, writing this? These are their words or, you know, Gen I, AI. How do we know that it's not taking away other jobs that are out there in anything that's a written word, like journalists, 
you know, so I feel like those are just three specific examples, but there's an example for just about everything. What do you think? So there's goods and bads, right? There's yeah. goods and bads with everything. I know personally I've used chat GPT or Gemini mm-hmm. or whatever it is, and it's been good and it, it's helped me to think differently mm-hmm. with the different opportunities that I've had to use it. So I've appreciated that. Would it, can I just give it the task? I'm I'm not, I'm not smart enough yet on how to use it to just be able to give it a task and say, here, here's the answer. And I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. So I still have to go through and utilize it. It's been a tool for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And where we're going with that, I think that, um, you know, that we've got a big ethics dilemma kind Mm -hmm. of thing coming up with like what we're going to do. Um, where we are ethically with that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I don't know what that looks like. Um, we're, one of the things that we're taking on at the Tech Grove, we're having a mixology event and we call it mixology because we bring together an academic, a, somebody, an industry leader, and then somebody, a government leader to talk about a certain subject. I call it a geek fest. So it'll be about a, a science kind of topic. And it's going to be the calibration of trust in AI. So how does the human trust or not trust AI? So that's one of the topics that we're going to take on because it is such a topic of interest. And I think from those three different perspectives, it's going to be different answers is what we're kind of excited about. Mm -hmm. That sounds very interesting. One of the things that I think people um, may not realize is we've been, we used to have books and we would go to the library and get books and we read and we took notes. And then we had the internet, fast forward, we have the internet and the internet takes all knowledge that's in books Mm -hmm. as much as it can, right? And makes it accessible so we don't have to go through the card catalog. We can find anything. It's the same principle. Now, Gen AI takes all of this stuff that we've been posting on the internet and it finds it faster for us. So to me, it's just another iteration of what we have. So it is a tool. But the fact that it can um, build and potentially replicate uh, code is something that I think is interesting. It ties into uh, another question that I'm going to ask you, because it is possible if you saw what was the movie, um, 20, oh gosh, it was the computer movie way back. I don't need, I don't ever see it. It'll come to me in a minute. Never mind. Um, But I just keep moving on. Um, There's... The computer on the spaceship said, so what do you think? And it was starting to talk to the man and it said, I can shut down the, com- you know, I can shut down right. the spaceship. What was that movie? Um, was Hal the name of the computer? I think so. I, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's like 20th or 20 something. Anyway, it'll come to me. Um, but the point of all of that is, is it can only have as much authority as we allow it. And I feel like there needs to be a lot of ethics around this and, you know, people that are being good stewards of what Gen AI can be and making sure that we use it for good, not to destroy things or people or hurt things. Um, Because that's how we ended up with the atomic bomb, right? That's how we've ended up with other things that were bad for the world. Yes. So... Good stewardship. And if we've not learned that yet, it'd be a good thing to learn. Right. That would be the thing, I would say. Right. That's the, that's the scary part yeah. of it, right? And we always know that there is evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So on the good part of it, I did hear about AI and I think Wendy's and how they're using that to predict surges and what what food will be the, the surge on so that they can do, you know, some more predictive of what to have ready for when you come in so you don't have to wait as long. So that's kind of interesting that they're taking it into different markets and we're using it in the military, right? Mm -hmm. It's being used in all sorts of different business areas. So it's interesting. Yeah. And I know when we were talking about it, I was thinking, well, I would use traffic patterns and then you'd be able to tell for sure, like, you know, Google and say, how many people are coming past here? And it was there an accident on whatever. And, you know, how can we um, be supportive of the community? Kind of like how uh, Walmart and some of the other stores are using real time ordering. You know, oh, we track all of the inventory in the store. Oh, it's time. We need to send another shipment in of, I don't know, you know, milk, if you will, right. whatever. It helps them to know when to have sales and when to, you know, promote other products and make sure that they're uh, being 
acquired quickly and, and also lessen the amount of uh, product that is actually sitting on the shelves. Yeah. So I think that that would be definitely, I agree with you on that. So the creator of AI was Jeffrey Hinton, and he was interviewed on 60 Minutes uh, about what he had done 50 something years ago. And he called, he is called the godfather of AI. I've been trying to get a hold of this man to have him as a guest on my podcast. I'm going to try for the whole year because I don't know if he will, but he's, um, he's in his May, mid to late seventies. So I'm not, the clock's ticking is what I'm saying. Um, so I really want this gentleman. Um, he said that one of the ways in which these types of systems, computer or AI, might escape control is by writing their own computer code to modify themselves. And that's something we need to seriously worry about. Right. And I think that's just wisdom there because that's somebody that has, he created it, but he can also, 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, that's There it, you yes. go. That's the movie. 2001 Space Odyssey. It just flashed in my head and when I got to say it. Anyway, um, when he's talking about that, I sat there and I was thinking, you know, he is so right because right. we know that there is low code and no code. And those are things that can actually replicate themselves and build something. Right. So ethics and AI, it's a whole thing. So necessary. So it is. And yes. Hmm. What is the best mentoring advice that you want to share with our listeners about the future? about the future, just mentoring advice. Both. You can okay. pick both. Okay. So I would say about, it's, I'm going to say relationships. Okay. It's about building relationships and that for the future too, especially as what we talked about, like mm -hmm. if, if we go forward and we're all into AI, don't forget relationships. Um, if we go backwards and we're, we need to build mm -hmm. relationships for survival, right? So whatever that is, it's relationships. It's, it's about the journey. It's about helping for me it's about helping but it's about building the relationships mm, i agree with you wholeheartedly i feel like there's going to be more of those kind of courses you know teaching us how to be relational and to be more um i know that's what empathy is supposed to be all about is you know oh you're remember it's not all about you it is about others right and empathy is a fancy word for what you teach a, a five-year-old, a three-year-old to do. Oh, no, no, honey, you have to share. You know, right. you have to remember, look at him. You did that. You made that person cry. No, don't do that. <laughs> so it's the same over here when we're talking about, you know, being relational, you know, right. and people, when you're hiding behind a screen and you're always working in a remote world and you don't have that human in-person interaction. Yes. You forget how to be relational. Texts, right. Texts are great. I love texts. I, mm -hmm. I text all the time, but there's so much that's good for when you know somebody and you can kind of figure out the tone and what's going on. Emails, uh, I, I, I use them all the time too, but it, it's just so hard to interpret sometimes mm -hmm. what's going on there. And I can get so much done by just picking up the phone and calling. And hearing their voice. Yes. The and intonation. The back and the forth real quick, right? Where an email, is, it gets cloggy. Oh, it's a... Sometimes you have to rewrite that email a number of times because did this sound right? And all of the kinds of stuff we're on a phone call 15 minutes later, 10 minutes later, whatever, it's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. So I agree. The relationships, picking up the phone sometimes, having, we, we just had a big event at the Tech Grove and probably 200 people there. And people came up to me and we're just about, we could have done this all virtually, but we got to talk to people that we wouldn't. In have, a different we, way. And we got, we wouldn't have seen them virtually. We mm -hmm. wouldn't have had the the bump into people and just, oh, by the way, kind mm -hmm. of conversation. And they were able to get real work done. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love this. And I'm very, very relational. So I thrive on that. When we had COVID, it was extremely depressing to have to always be on a camera because you can't move. And if you're on camera, yes, people can see everything that you're doing, you know, like, oh, you picked up your phone. Whereas I might be in a room and they might see me pick up my phone, but they are also seeing that I put it down or whatever. They're not it's just not seen the same way when you're right. in person versus when you're online. Right. Yeah. It's holistic. Again. It is holistic. It is. Yeah. So why this holistic word again? Why? Because I think that's, we, we get compartmentalized and we mm -hmm. get segmented and we only look at one, you know, whatever dimension, but we're not looking at the whole person, the whole environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you had shared something, and I think it was before the show, okay. where you had had uh, breast, breast cancer. cancer. Yeah. Yes. And that's where that holistic thing yes. had come into play. And I don't know if we talked about it actually on the show. I'm going to go back over here and look really quick here. But I remember you saying that you were thinking about, you know, your nutrition and your rest yes. and your spiritual life and everything. And I, I don't think that people think that way. Yes. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, definitely that's a you know, life-changing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll give me that. It was life-changing. And I had some choices to make, mm -hmm. right, on how to approach it. And so I went after the holistic, and I was really blessed. Some of the, my friends that I work with are engineers. Mm -hmm. And so they like the numbers, they like the science, and I divorced myself from all of that, and they took that over. So I, I did compartmentalize. Like, I just went into taking care of me, and that was our agreement. I would take care of me. So I made sure that I was eating right. I didn't like to eat during, once you get chemo, sometimes you don't want to eat. So I made sure that what I was eating was nutritious. Even if it was just a few calories, I was getting nutrition in. Then I was exercising my body. I wasn't going to the gym, but I was walking, right? I was mm -hmm. doing the different things. I had a spiritual connection. I had connection with family and friends because it was all of me, right? And mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure, I wanted to give myself the best opportunity for coming out the other side of that on, um, you know, being here, being a part of my children's life, being able to help others. And I thought that the way to do that for me, it was holistically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. That's a great way to finish out the show. Um, how can our readers, or not readers, sorry. How can our listeners, I, I see the word read and I say it, but how can our listeners find you? Because we give them your LinkedIn profile, but what other ways do you suggest? Well, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm also on Instagram. I think it's Diana Teal 321. Yes, it is. Like three, two, one, just in yeah. case you didn't get it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm at the Tech Grove. Anybody at the Tech Grove can take Just look for Central Florida Tech Grove. Yes, yeah. you, you can get in touch with me through there, through Naval X, the Central Florida Tech Bridge. If you find anything on Naval X, they can point you in my direction. And then I work for the Naval Air Warfare Center Training Systems Division, not TSD. Yeah. And all of that information, uh, listeners, is on her LinkedIn profile. So look for Diana, D-I-A-N-A. -A. Teal is T-E-E-L. Yeah. Yes. And that's how you'll be able to find her. Well, I want to tell you thank you so much. It's been delightful having you as a guest on the show today. It's been an honor. Thank you for having me here. This oh, is the highlight. Yeah. I know you were a little apprehensive when we talked about it at, at its second. I, you've been like a phenomenal guest. Oh, so you. this is good. And you're so knowledgeable. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. I feel so educated because I went, I did not know all of this other stuff when you started talking geek talk, which is a good thing. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to encourage everybody to go and look for Diana and be sure to reach out to her on LinkedIn. Thank you to our sponsor, Cat5 Studios. Our video editor is Max Stein. Our music is by Sophie Lloyd. Visit www.e4c.tech to learn how you can recruit, assess, and improve employee learning and your company culture through DEI skills, hiring, and learning. Become an E4C member today. Mention you listen to the show and you may get the chance to become a guest on the Intern Whisperer podcast. You can support The Intern Whisperer by sharing, commenting, liking, and subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcast streaming apps.